alternatives, I was planning on doing that, but, but, they're, but they're not. I'm Marty Goldenson, and welcome to NYC Votes 1988. On this edition, we'll meet a candidate for the 64th Assembly District in Manhattan. This area covers Chelsea, Clinton, Midtown, Lincoln Center, Central Park West, and parts of Murray Hill. This is Assemblyman Richard Gottfried, the Democratic and liberal incumbent. He is seeking his 10th term. His opponent, Republican John McCann, has declined to join us. Questioning our candidate are Janet Golovner, a representative from the League of Women Voters, and Terry Galway of the Empire State Report. Terry, why don't we start with you? Sure. Assemblyman, the, this summer New York City has become known as the medical waste capital of the world, probably. Mm -hmm. You have been involved in several environmental issues uh, during your career, and the Assembly recently passed a medical waste bill. Is it too much, uh, too little, too late, the Assembly bill? Uh, it is probably something we would have done well to do earlier. The legislation uh, was developed uh, before uh, this summer hit, uh, and we have there have been efforts over the years to pass similar legislation uh, in Albany. Uh, one of the problems we have with environmental legislation, as with many other things, uh, is it's relatively easy to pass good legislation in the state assembly, which has a Democratic majority, uh, harder to do so in the Republican-controlled uh, state Senate. In this particular case, why is that? Why would the Republican state Senate be opposed to what would seem to be a good government bill mm -hmm. for the environment? Uh, I think uh, basically it is that on, on this, as on many issues, the, the Senate Republican leadership tends to be uh, a lot more considerate, if you will, of uh, the concerns of industry. Uh, than of uh, the needs of, of individual uh, citizens. But we've had waste all over the state of New York this summer. Mm -hmm. We've had it up in the lakes. We've had it mm -hmm. on the shoreline here. Right. Isn't it time? Don't you think that the, uh, that the Senate will eventually wake up oh, well, to the problem? Well, this problems? year we, we did finally get passage in both houses of, uh, uh, I think, some fairly strong uh, infectious waste uh, legislation. And over the years, we have gotten enacted uh, reasonably good, uh, generally uh, general hazardous waste uh, legislation. This year's bill was targeted specifically on strengthening laws that we had enacted actually a year ago, uh, dealing with uh, with hospital and other medical waste. If New York State, the New York State government, can handle its own waste mm -hmm. and laws protecting the environment, is this mm -hmm. something that the federal government has has to do for the state? I don't think the federal government has to do it. For us, I think there are things that the federal government can and should do in the environmental field, uh, particularly because a lot of these problems cross state lines. Uh, 
but the handling of, of conventional waste as opposed to nuclear waste uh, has traditionally been a state and local responsibility and I think probably always will be uh, and maybe should be. Uh, and uh, I don't know that Washington would be any more likely uh, to take on industry than, uh, than Albany, uh, certainly until there are some major changes in Washington. So maybe if I could just uh, switch gears on you and move to housing, which of mm -hmm. course is a very important issue in your district as well. Yes. Uh, the Mitchell-Lama conversion bill has come up again. I believe mm -hmm. the Assembly has uh, voted in favor of a one-year moratorium. Right. And of course people have been talking about Mitchell-Lama for years now. How is that finally going to resolve itself? What way do you support? Well, that's hard to say. We, uh, we just had a big rally in front of City Hall with the governor and the mayor and a whole handful of legislators uh, calling for the passage of legislation to postpone uh, the buyout of Mitchell Lama buildings. It, the issue is really at this point in the hands of the State Senate and it's a question of trying to press them on it. Uh, you know, what, what's at stake here is literally tens if not hundreds of thousands of units of middle income housing, affordable housing that we desperately need uh, and which we have now and have had for, uh, for 20 years but which we are going to lose if we allow uh, the owners of those buildings to buy out of the program and, and go private. But by the same token, the state said 20 years ago, here is the deal. After mm -hmm. 20 years, you'll be able to buy out now. If right. the state goes back on mm -hmm. that, uh, can it be accused of not negotiating in good faith? Could it ever be trusted again? Well, uh, I think anyone who, uh, who does business in New York or any place else understands that uh, we have legislatures that are always in session and can change the terms. Any law that we enact that uh, imposes some new obligation on someone, they could say, hey, you know, I, I went into the medical business last year and you didn't tell me I'd have a hard time disposing of my waste. Now that I've, I'm in practice, you're going to tell me I've got a hard time disposing of my medical waste. Uh, you know, we change the rules of the game quite frequently. That's why we have a legislature. Uh, I think the question is, are, would we be doing so unfairly on the owners of mitchell Lama buildings? And that, I think, clearly it would not be unfair. They, the developers of Mitchell Lama buildings put down a minimal down payment. They've had the benefit of, uh, uh, of substantial tax abatements over the years. They've been making profits over the years. They are now looking to take that housing, which public benefit created for them, uh, and to get really a windfall profit selling it on the open market and taking it out from under any kind of rent regulations if they can. Uh, I don't think we have to sit still for that. Mm -hmm. Are there other ways uh, besides the uh, Mitchell Lama moving away from that mm -hmm. to promote uh, affordable housing that you as an assemblyman uh, or that the assembly mm -hmm. can uh, promote? Uh, sure. We've, uh, we've enacted legislation uh, this year and, uh, and the year before to, uh, and not just passed in one house, but uh, enacted into law that use the surpluses from Battery Park City, uh, that use uh, uh, the one-shot surplus that we had in the budget a couple of years ago as a, as a nest egg uh, to put uh, hundreds of millions and in fact uh, billions of dollars over the next uh, decade or so uh, to construct affordable housing. Uh, we've put that legislation in place that a lot of the problem uh, now is pulling that money through the pipeline. Uh, we've had money for housing for the homeless and for a variety of things that uh, that we put into the pipeline, so to speak, from Albany five years ago, uh, that we are still trying to get pushed out uh, the other end. Uh, I'd say that's one of our major housing problems, and protecting existing affordable housing from being destroyed, uh, uh, whether it's by something like the mitchell Lama buyout, or uh, in our community, uh, we've got the threat of gentrification and uh, so-called development, mm -hmm. uh, which is rapidly gobbling up affordable housing and converting it into high-priced housing. Terry? If, assembly, if I could just move to education, uh, I'm going to cover a lot of topics mm -hmm. here. Uh, Mayor Koch has suggested that Albany does not give New York City its fair share when it comes right. to education aid. Do right. you agree with that? And what can be done to change that? Uh, New York City does not get as large a share of state aid to education as we, I think, should. And for the years that I've been there and for years before, uh, we have been fighting uh, to make some headway on that score. And, and we have gradually made some progress. I think the, the tone of the mayor's comments earlier this year was really very, uh, very unfair and very destructive. and uh, Not helpful, you're saying? Precisely. And, and I think used up a lot of goodwill that the city uh, otherwise would have had. Uh, but every year we do make some, some progress on that score. The, the problem is we're fighting against 
some very entrenched uh, financial and political power uh, primarily in the suburbs. And we getting what over that takes an awful lot Excuse me, we have time for just one last question. Okay, what marks would you give Chancellor Green for his first six months? Uh, so far, I'd be very, I'm very impressed with him. Well, uh, with, with that length ans answer, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you think that the school board's uh, structure should be, um, re sh should school boards be rezoned, the districts? Uh, rezoned? I, I think there are there are re some rezoning that needs to be Redistricted, done. Redistricted. The, I the I main thing I would like to do with our school boards uh, is is to shift to instead of having all of the members run at large throughout a whole community school district, uh, I'd rather have them run from small neighborhood districts within uh, the school district so that individual school board members can have some real relationship with a with a, a decent sized uh, number of voters. I'm so I'm afraid we run out of time right there. Okay. Thanks to our candidate, Assemblyman Richard Gottfried. I'm Marty Goldenson, NYC Votes 1988. We'll be right back. For a free booklet, How to Be a Voter, send a stamped self-addressed envelope to The League of Women Voters, 817 Broadway, New York, New York, 13003. Or call the League at 212-674-8484. Welcome back to NYC Votes 1988. I'm Marty Goldenson. On this segment, we will meet a candidate for the 50th Assembly District in Brooklyn. This area covers Greenpoint, Williamsburg, Northside, Southside, and parts of Fort Greene. This is Assemblyman Joseph Lentol, the Democratic incumbent seeking his eighth term. Declining to join us is his opponent, Linda Kupavlowski, a Republican and conservative. Questioning our candidate, Janet Golovner, a representative from the League of Women Voters, and Terry Galway of the Empire State Report. This time I'll think we'll start with our candidate from the League, our, our questioner from the League of Women Voters, Janet Golovner. I'm not running for anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Assemblyman, how do you feel that you have best served your constituents in Brooklyn over these last 16 years? And it's a general question, but also what is the major problem in your district? Well, I think uh, to answer the last part first, uh, my district, like most of the districts in New York City, I think the major problem is crime and drugs. Even though uh, parts of my district suffer less from the threat of drugs, a good portion of the assembly district, like Fort Greene and Williamsburg, have a very serious drug problem, and as a result, a concomitant crime problem. Uh, in my 16 years that I've served in the assembly in Albany, I've tried to work very closely with neighborhood organizations on a local level to not only get them funding, but to work side by side with them to improve the quality of life in the Greenpoint, Williamsburg, and, and Fort Greene community. And that's been a, a major effort. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the neighborhood organizations uh, are the ones that really provide the best service to the people in the district unlike in characteristically I feel it's government doesn't really provide the kind of service that can be produced at a very local and community level. Terry, Terry Galway of the Empire State Report. Assemblyman, we have a new housing commissioner, Rick Higgins. Do we have a housing policy that you've been able to identify? Not yet. I haven't really uh, had an opportunity to meet the new commissioner. I haven't spoken with him yet. Uh, I know firsthand that that particular job, the uh, Office of Housing in the State of New York is a very, very difficult one and one in which uh, the previous commissioners have tried to tackle but have only met with failure. And the taking on of additional city responsibilities by that agency hasn't made it any easier. Do you think maybe the Division of Housing and Community Renewal, which is its formal title, do you think perhaps it should be split between the uh, division which handles 
creation of housing and that which administers rent regulations? Do you think that's a possibility? I think that that's a good possibility. I think that would uh, take away a great deal of burden.